Good evening and welcome to Metro Focus. I'm Rafael Piroman. It's the president versus the press. The tensions between the White House and the media that covers it escalated to new levels this week. On Wednesday, the White House stripped CNN correspondent Jim Acosta of his press credentials after following a heated confrontation between the journalist and the president. Acosta had asked Trump about the caravan of immigrants heading from Latin America to the U.S. border, prompting this exchange. Your campaign had an ad showing migrants climbing over walls and well, so on. Well, that's true. It poured, it, but they it, weren't actors. They're not going to be doing they that. They weren't actors. Well, no, it's true. Do you think they were actors? They weren't actors. They didn't come from Hollywood. Right. These, <laughs> were, these were people. This was an actual, you know, it happened a few days ago. And, uh, They're hundreds of miles away, though. They're hundreds and hundreds of miles you know away. That, that's I not an invasion. Should, honestly, uh, I think you should let me run the country. You run CNN. All right. And if you did it well, your ratings well, let me would be ask, much better. If I, if I may okay, ask one enough. other question, Mr. President, if I may, if I may ask Peter, one other question, are you worried? Of, that's enough. That's Mr. enough. Mr. President, I, well, that's I was going to ask one of the, the other folks. That's had, enough. Pardon me, ma'am. I'm, I'm, Mr. Excuse President, me. that's enough. Mr. President, I had one other Peter, question, if I may ask, on, on the Russia investigation. Are you concerned that that you may have I'm not concerned about anything with you the may Russian have investigation because it's a hoax. Are you That's enough. Put down the mic. After the press conference, Sarah Huckabee Sanders released a statement justifying the decision to strip Acosta of his credentials, accusing him of, quote, placing his hands on a young woman just trying to do her job as a White House intern. Video of the incident replayed over and over on news channels and social media showed that the interaction between Acosta and the intern was brief, and Acosta appeared to brush her arm as she reached for the microphone, and he tried to hold on to it. That night, Acosta posted a grainy video on Twitter showing a Secret Service agent at the White House asking him to surrender his pass, which grants journalists access to the compound. In a statement, CNN claimed that the White House revoked Acosta's pass out of, quote, retaliation for his challenging questions at the press conference, an accusation the White House strongly denied. The news conference and the removal of Acosta's press pass marked a new low in the fraught relationship between President Trump and the media, which the president has frequently referred to as, quote, the enemy of the people. The battle has also inflamed the stark partisan divisions afflicting the country, a divide not seen since perhaps the darkest day of the Watergate scandal. And joining us now to talk about it all is CNN presidential historian Tim Naftali. He is the co-author of the new book, Impeachment in American History. He was also the founding director of the Richard Nixon Presidential Library, where he oversaw the library's acclaimed exhibit on Watergate. Tim, welcome back to the show. Thanks, Rafael. It's good to be here. So Acosta being stripped of his White House press pass, uh, is there a precedent for that? Has that ever happened before? Well, we've... Uh, we've, we've had incidents where presidents have, have wanted to ban newspapers. Uh, <laughs> yeah. um, John F. Kennedy at one point wanted to stop reading. He didn't want, he didn't want the White House to subscribe to the New York Herald Tribune. Mm -hmm. But he didn't throw the Herald Tribune's White House correspondent out of the press corps. Um, similarly, uh, Richard Nixon who hated the Washington Post, sure, sure. Uh, didn't want to have anything to do with them and was not going to grant an interview to them. But he didn't throw them out of the mm. press corps. Mm. So this is unprecedented by the president. And you know, what, what's dismaying is that yesterday was an opportunity for President Trump to establish a new climate. Mm. Uh, there will be a rebalancing of power in Washington in January. He will have to deal with uh, Democratic chairs, chairs of committees in the House. And he, as part of his constitutional duty as president, he has to interact with them. Mm -hmm. This was an opportunity to set a new tone. The way in which he dealt with the press, not just Jim Acosta, who's a professional yeah. and a colleague, but the way he dealt with the entire press corps showed that he has no interest in altering the level of um, contempt, mm -hmm. of reducing but, but, it. But, you know, as people, and I'll talk about this uh, because I've seen criticism from both sides all over the place, but people say... Doesn't it cut both ways? I mean, you see, you look at that press conference and you look at some of the questions and the way that they were phrased. It's, it's, it's questions and the way they're phrased that you had never seen before as well. Well, I don't think the president can, get, can have it both ways. The president has decided to alter the nature of the decorum that usually adheres to the office of the president. The, yesterday, it was really interesting. You mean he sets the tone? No, let me put it this way, Raphael. During the press conference, he made a most cynical statement 
He said, you know, this is earned media because he was asked, would you have another press conference? We haven't heard from you, sir, in a long time. Mm -hmm. And he said, yeah, this is earned media. It's worth billions. Mm -hmm. The point was, he's saying, I'm using the press as um, a backdrop so that I can get my message out. And if his message includes, mis includes half-truths or lies, it is the obligation of the fifth estate, it's the obligation of the press mm -hmm. to call him on it. Otherwise, they are props. Mm -hmm. They are standing there listening to him. So if the president is not going to treat the office of the presidency with the due respect that it, it should have, I'm not suggesting that others shouldn't treat him with respect, mm -hmm. but he should understand the aggressiveness with which members of the press um, are responding to his lies and, and half-truths. I mean, after all, the caravan story mm -hmm. was, uh, the, was something that one would expect from a demagogue. Uh, these people are a thousand miles away from the U.S. border. The president puts 15,000 U.S. troops, or at least says he's going to put 15,000 troops on the border, to stop a group of people who, by the time they reach the border, they're not going to be one caravan. Mm -hmm. That's not the way it has worked in the past. He never told the American people the nature of the challenge. And that was what Jim Acosta was asking well, but, him about. But, but it's, not, it's not right mm -hmm. that our president is not willing to level with us mm -hmm. about what's actually going on. So the challenge, I think, for the press, and, and I'm not speaking, you know, I'm not a journalist, but I, as I said, I've, I've, I respect my colleagues. Um, the challenge is, what are you supposed to do? Are you supposed to listen, nod your head, as if you were listening to Dwight Eisenhower, mm -hmm. When, in fact, you're getting a series, not a spin. It's not just spin. Spin's okay. There's always spin. But you're getting a series of, of half-truths, mistruths, fantasies, and lies. Isn't it up to the press to stand up and do what the American people can't do it for themselves because they're not in the room, yeah. to say, Mr. President, I have a follow-up. Yeah. Mr. President, and that's what they're doing. Yeah. And the problem is that in response, the president gets heated and he loses his cool. But, but Tim, you know... Um, for all the Americans that, have, that looked at that exchange, um, and, and, and don't give it as deep a reflection as you just did, you know, we, we booked you here actually before this ever happened because we wanted you to talk about the divide of the country. And it just hit me this morning how much that little vignette kind of manifests that division. I got about 5,000 followers on Facebook and, it, and across the political spectrum. And you see half of them saying the president is Hitler, is Fidel Castro, is Hugo Chavez, the beginning of the end of a free press. And on the other side, you see, you know, um, Acosta is a fake reporter. You know, he's a buffoon. He, you know, every name in the book. Americans seeing the same incident so starkly different. What are the possibilities of a reunification of these Americans? And what are the presidents for this division? Well... First of all, I know it's, it's hard. Um, this is a very hormonal time, actually, in America. It's a very emotional time in our history. Mm. Um, and we are extremely tribal. Um, I'm, not, I'm not the only person saying that. Most yeah. people who observe our political scene are saying that. Always have been? Uh, we have, we have uh, peaks and valleys mm -hmm. of tribalism. Um, but... Uh, Here's the story that, here's what we should be talking to ourselves and about. We, we have an obligation um, not to break the country that our predecessors gave us. Uh, we, we are on this earth for a certain period of time, and we as Americans are part of the American story. We are, uh, we have inherited great institutions, a phenomenal constitution. Um, and we need to take care of our country. Our Constitution wants us to compete. It's healthy. That's why we have the separation of powers. Mm -hmm. But not at each other's throats. We just had a midterm election where uh, there's been a rebalancing of power. The American people have said very clearly that they don't want one party, the president's party, mm -hmm. to run every branch of government. Yeah. That's very normal. Sure. That happens. The when the president and his party get out of sync with most Americans, there's a rebalancing. Yeah. That's healthy. The climate of pro professional politicians should reflect an understanding that our Constitution wanted this to happen. Yeah. And rather to get, than get angry, which was so clear from the president's behavior, yeah. 
Rather than get angry, he should accept it the way that Barack Obama accepted it, the way that George W. Bush accepted it, the way that Bill Clinton accepted it, the way that even Ronald Reagan accepted uh, a reverse in his first midterm election. Mm -hmm. Why can't Donald Trump show the self-discipline and the dignity that previous presidents, Democratic and Republican, have done and shown yeah. when faced with an electoral reverse? You know, That's the challenge. Yeah, and, yeah. And, and it comes from, but I'm saying, the head of state of our country can help set the tone. The head of state is not setting a tone of unity, okay. and that's what we need. Tim, uh, uh, Americans usually like divided government, apparently. Yeah. It happens all the time, yeah. as you said, and the market certainly does. Uh, it was reflected by the stock market yesterday. Um, but what is, what is this divided government going to look like? Uh, because, as you know, the, the, the Democratic Congress or the leaders of the new committees, they're out to get the president, right? Um, and if they no, do... I don't, no, I don't agree that. Well, that's I, what that's what that's what some, some of them, them are saying. Some of them, right? some, some of them are, who well, are going some, to be taking oh, over committees are saying. You'll notice that the that the. But uh, my question is, if you can allow me, you mm. are the expert well. on Watergate. I wonder if there. Uh, I'm sorry on impeachment. You just wrote the book on impeachment. Are we going to see that play out for the next couple of years? It would be a huge mistake for uh, the House to undertake impeachment and an impeachment inquiry mm -hmm. right now based on what we know. Um, an impeachment, the, the, the standard of high crimes and misdemeanors is a, is a standard that it's very high. It was really set, frankly, by the Rodino Committee, where a bipartisan group, Republicans and Democrats, decided that Richard Nixon should be impeached. Mm -hmm. And they decided that high crime and misdemeanor is a crime, is a challenge to our constitutional order, that the, allowing the president to stay in office would undermine our republic. You don't make that decision if you're convinced that the, um, because, you know, impeachment is a trauma. Mm. And um, unless there's a consensus that continuing a president in office is more injurious to the country mm -hmm. than the trauma of impeachment, he stays and finishes his term. Yeah, sure. We don't have the data, the, unless, you know, maybe the Mueller investigation will bring forward evidence of bribery or treason or what have you. But here's my point. Listen, the, we the, only have 30 seconds, and I want to get into um, another... They, okay, I just want to say that the members of Congress, if they look at history, will know that you can undertake oversight without engaging in an impeachment inquiry. All right, as I said, we have about 30 seconds, and I got to ask you this. He fired Jeff Sessions. There are people saying that this is parallels to Watergate when uh, President Nixon, the Saturday night massacre, when he fired Archibald Cox and fired a lot of his own people because they wouldn't fire him. Is there a parallel? There will be a parallel if the president shuts down or attempts to shut down the Mueller investigation. Yes, that's a direct parallel. Right now, the firing of Sessions looks like it's an on, ominous, ominous sign. But the Saturday night massacre is all about getting to Archibald Cox and shutting down the Watergate prosecution. The uh, attorney general and the deputy attorney general are, uh, one resigns, the other is removed because they won't do it. So the parallel is what is what the tr if President Trump seeks to shut down the Mueller investigation, then we have a new Saturday night massacre. All right. Okay. Well, Tim, thank you so much for joining us today Thanks and talking to us about this. Thank you.